So, there's so, so. No, I can't start out like that. The purpose of this video is to talk about microphone technique. <laughs> And I work with a lot of singers, and when I work with them, I'm always surprised how little they seem to know about how microphones work and what their part is in trying to get a successful sound in a live environment. So this mic that I'm working on right now is kind of a beat-up Sennheiser wireless. It's a G1 series uh, wireless with a condenser head. And this mic has its own particular group of things that go on with it. I'm going to turn on a noise gate just because I want to stop getting background noise. So this mic has some good and bad characteristics depending on what you're looking for. Now right now I have no EQ applied to it and you'll notice there's some serious sibilance in this microphone and a fair amount of low frequency kind of handling noise. So the first thing a singer needs to be cognizant of is, is the mic they're using making noise when they move it around? And the second thing is, where do they keep the mic when they're singing? And that seems to be a problem with some singers. Now, one of the events that I work on regularly involves eight singers, all of whom are pretty animated on stage. They're moving around a lot. They're doing a lot of things. So their positioning of microphones is very inconsistent. So let's just talk about what happens. Now the first thing is that microphones are really designed to be used at about a two to four inch working distance in front of the capsule, generally speaking. If you take the mic and you were to tilt it, as some people do, to a 90 degree angle, you'll notice there's a relatively large shift in the response of the mic. Some wind noises change frequency to very low frequencies. This other camera shot, if the video guys have put it on the screen, shows frequency spectrum and you can see the different frequencies being affected with lows over here, highs over here. If you guys don't know that, you're probably not sound guys, you're probably singers. So anyway, the position of the mic is a big deal. The other thing with the microphone is that gain is related to the position. So if I'm using the mic here like this and I double that working distance, I just went from two inches to four inches, you'll notice that there's a big drop in level and there's an attendant change in frequency response. This is what's known as proximity effect. Most microphones exhibit proximity effect to some degree, some more than others. Condensers like this 865 head have a lot of proximity. And if you get really close to the capsule, it gets really kind of crazy. And if you get really close to the capsule with it at funny angles, it gets even weirder. So one of the first things we do with condensers is we typically roll off the really low frequencies by putting a low cut filter on them. And then once that's done, you start looking at other things you might want to do, such as get rid of this sibilance that's on the microphone. So we do that, and then the singer has a microphone that's a little more neutral, but if they back off the mic like this, they're gone. So effectively, when the gain drops down to 20 dB below everybody else, it's a problem. So what I do, and not everybody agrees with this, but what I like to do is make it where if they get too far away from the mic, it turns them off. So the gate just turned them off. Now for the purposes of this video, I probably won't let that happen. But when you've got eight singers on stage and you're trying to blend their voices, and I deal with this regularly, and they are getting so far away from the mic that effectively their voice is gone. Now the fact they don't hear themselves in the monitors, you would think that would affect them too, but generally speaking, they ignore it. So. The singer is not cognizant of what's going on, and they back off to a point where I would rather have their mic off than having it pick up random noise from other things on stage. So working distance is a big deal, and people need to be aware that if the working distance is not 
reasonable, they're not only going to have tone problems, they're going to have a I left the mix problem. So that's the first thing to look at. Second thing is consistent use of the microphone. Now, one of the more popular things these days with some singers is something that was popularized by rap stars, which is the cupping your hand over the microphone. Now, cupping your hand over a microphone does a number of things. It changes the frequency response. It changes the gain. It changes a lot of things. Now, looking at this, you'll notice a big boost around 100, 200, 1K, 2K, and it gets kind of nasally sounding. And part of it depends on how far you cup your hand. Now, if I cup my hand only partially, like if I start here and now I get my hand up to the bottom of the capsule and I get there, that's one sound. And then if I get my hand really over it, like some people do to this level, now I get some real stuff going on. Now, if I wanted to fix these things, I could. I could take this 1K-ish peak out of here. I could take out some of these things down in the low frequency region and bring back in some higher frequencies that I need because of everything else that's going on. And that's fine. If this singer wanted to use it this way all night, I could kick in a compressor to level out the gain problems I'm running into because of all of this. But then if that same singer suddenly decides to go back to holding the mic normally again, everything changes. So going from this to this to this, it just doesn't work too well for those of us who care about the overall mix. So that's an example of one of the problems that happens with singers on stage when they inconsistently just handle the microphone. Not to mention handling noise and other things that go on. Now, when you have eight singers doing this and you're trying to deal with lots of changes, that's a serious problem. So one of the first things people really need to learn is to avoid the gain changes that occur with microphone working distance. If you're moving around a lot, you got to learn to move your body with your head, which means you can't have your head going in different directions than your microphone. So this is kind of like playing an instrument. If you're a guitar player, your fingers are supposed to be on the strings when you're playing chords. So you really have to work on this. And for singers, they seem to, at least the ones I get to work with, they seem to ignore all of this. And then they wonder why there's no altos, there's no tenors, there's no this, there's no that. The other ones that I really don't like for other reasons, I want to turn this compressor on before I do this, are the ones who eat the microphone now, this particular situation, the gain of the mic is already too high to get away with this. So I'm clipping the input, so I'm just backing off that, and then I'm using the compressor, and I'll have to use some makeup gain to get back the gain I'm reducing. But when you get really, really close to one of these microphones, and now I'm going to have to turn the EQ back on to try to fix the stuff that's happening by being really, really close to this microphone. And there's a lot that goes on with this particular microphone when, it, when you get really close to it. So you end up with a curve that looks pretty bizarre when you get really up there. That sibilance peak, while it's still there, is less prevalent, and you get all of this low mid-frequency energy going on. So the way you fix that is you use the mic properly. So this is one style of microphone. Let's talk about one that is radically different. And if you have singers who, for example, like to cup their hands over the mic, it's a better choice. So what we got here is a Bayer TCX58, which is their kind of version of an SM58. Now this mic right now with EQ off, you'll notice it's very, very neutral sounding. Now, if I were to cup my hand over this microphone, there's nowhere near the dramatic effects you get with the condensers. And this is one of my contentions. A lot of times people will walk in and they're used to doing something with the mic they used to use. And the sound with an on-off switch, the sound company shows up with a different kind of microphone and hands it to the same artist. And they decide to do what they always do, and they don't realize that they've gone from that to this, and 
this is now a significant problem. Now you'll notice also that this mic, although it has a lot of proximity effect when you get really close to it, it doesn't have nearly as much. So the shift with gain is not as hard to manage. So if you wanted to work it out with a compressor, you can actually get the compressor to manage the gain a lot better with this microphone where you, you get really close to it and you let's put up a ratio that's a little heavier and change release threshold. Okay, there we go. So you get on this mic and then when you back away from it, it turns you back up so you can get some things that aren't nearly as dramatic as you get with proximity effect on a different microphone. The other thing with this one is if you do want to put in a low cut filter, it solves the low frequency problem pretty much entirely. Let's turn this compressor back off. So all you've got on this mic right now is a low frequency cut and some tss -tss. You got some sibilance up at the top that you could take out easily using this filter. And you get a pretty neutral sounding microphone. And then if I cup my hand over it, the frequencies that get weird with this microphone are you get a different hand on it so I can use my other hand for EQ, are different than some of the other ones. And the same thing, if I want if I want to do this, if I just like the look and feel of this, I can make this work. But when you undo it, it's not as dramatic as it is with a condenser head, for example. So I guess what I'm trying to get across in this short video is singers really need to learn their hardware. They need to learn what works, what doesn't work. They need to learn how to follow themselves around. And if they're really singing, dancing type folks, they either have to go to a headset or they have to do something else. But when you're dealing with handheld microphones, you have a responsibility to make sure you're rendering properly. And if you don't, the sound guy can't deal with that with eight people. So wondering why you disappear in the mix is something you shouldn't be doing, which is why I do this thing where if, if you get away too far in my world, I just turn you off. And when you have a bunch of singers on stage and you're gating them all heavily like that, there is obviously band noise on stage, so you have to gate it within that realm to get that to work. But what it prevents is picking up a lot of uh, distant noise that you really don't want in your mix. So gating is one good way to solve that problem. And I've noticed the singers, at least the ones that I work with, they often don't even know that they left the mix, which shows that they're really not paying attention. But that's a whole nother story, and we can talk about that maybe some other time.